Hey, boys and girls, we are on chapter 45. Daniel Chappy James. Chappy James, 443. Four, what? Page 443. Oh, page 443 mm -hmm. in your book. And what's his name again? Daniel Chappy James. James. All right, and Mr. Kornthal, tell me what years he was alive. He was born in 1920, and he died when I was three years old in 1978. True. He died the year before I was born. I could not have met him, boys nope. and girls. I could not. But I could have. He could have. But I would have went, no. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> he could have held your hand when you were learning to walk. <laughs> okay, that's good. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. Daniel Chappy, Chappy James, James, page 443. Mr. Kornthal, start us out. I would love to. 11th commandment. Today, I'm going to teach you the 11th commandment, Lily James told her class one day. But, Miss Lily, my mama told me God gave 10 commandments. Is that true, boys and girls? Yes, it is. One of her students replied, That's true, Miss Lily said, but I have one more every one, wait, but I have one more every one of you should live by. Commandment 11. Thou shall not quit. Daniel James heard his mother teach this lesson. I'll let you finish it. Turn the page. Years after year, year after year, as she taught in her one room schoolhouse in their backyard, Daniel always lived by the by this rule and was determined not to quit. Okay, so we are gonna be doing a biography report. Uh, coming up soon mm -hmm. and I'm gonna touch on some of the ideas some of the things that are happening in our biography report so one of the things that is on your report is talked about his life as a child and so what can we if we were doing a report on Chappie James okay. what do we know well his mom was what a teacher mm -hmm. right she knew the Ten Commandments her name was Miss Lily and she taught in a one-room schoolhouse where in her Back, backyard yard. Mm -hmm. and how did Chappie learn year after year he was mm -hmm. taught by his mama uh, in the one-room schoolhouse in their backyard so those are fun things yeah. so if you were doing how did he grow up those are some of the things you put for Chappie James yeah. okay Mr. Cornthal which war did he oh, live through goodness. Okay. only one so let's look back at 443 I'm gonna say World War two yeah and that's it um but he was alive for america's 200th birthday that's cool wonder if he went to a party all right here we go can i read i would love that what's the title of this little section Chappy. Chappy. now it's in quotes so what do you think that means we're gonna find out daniel james jr was born in pensacola florida hmm. there's a college there i think mrs opperman went there to yeah, school i think so too Aubrey, you should ask her. Is that your school, Mama? Okay, so what was his name when he was born? Daniel, Daniel James, James Jr. Jr. So that tells me his dad was named Daniel James. So if you were doing a report on him, you could say his dad was named Dan Daniel James. And he was born in Pensacola, Pensacola Florida. Florida. He was 17th. Whoa. He was a 17th child wow. of Daniel and Lilla James. So no wonder they had a one-room schoolhouse. Their whole, their, yeah. all the kids in their family were how many, 17. How many, like, how many kids are in That's your class? more than I had in my class last year, boys and wow. girls. So um, he was the 17th. He's the baby of 17 kids. So he was a 17th child. There's 16 older brothers and sisters. Um, wow. He went by the name of Chappie. Chappie throughout his life. Because Chappie's mother believed that a good education was more important than life, she decided to teach her children at home. It doesn't tell us where he got his name. It doesn't. I want to look that up. Mm. 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 Maybe one of his siblings called him that. One of his 16 brothers or sisters. Oof. Crazy. Um, once other people realized that Mrs. James was teaching her own children, they asked her to teach their children too. She charged 25 cents a week. If the parents were too poor to pay, Mrs. James found a way to help them. She's awesome. Cool. So his mom was a servant. She was um, resourceful. She also mm -hmm. made a little money on the side mm -hmm. teaching other kids. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so we're at the last paragraph on that page. Because there was a naval air station in Pensacola, Florida, Florida. Chappie often saw planes fly overhead. Chappie dreamed of one day becoming a pilot. No, oh, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. He, When he became a teenager, he made 
excellent grades in high school and hoped to go to college. When his father died, Chappie was afraid his dreams of college were over. However, his sister promised to help them. This is in italics, boys mm -hmm. and girls. Chappie was accepted at Tuskegee oh, Institute, we know that. where he studied physical education and played on the football team. Tuskegee Institute. We know mm -hmm. some other friends who went there. We, we also do. know who built it, don't we? We do. And what they built it with? Special bricks. Special bricks. Okay, so Mr. Cornthal, here we go. Do you want okay. to quiz me or want me to quiz you? You quiz me. Okay, I'm going to read you a definition. Okay. Kids, you try and beat Mr. Cornthal. Tegan, I know you're good at this. Okay, here, let's try it. Let's go, Tegan. <laughs> Game on. The five-sided building in Arlington, Virginia, containing the offices of the U.S. Department of Defense. I know five. Go. It's Pentagon. 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 It's the same shape. See, if you look at the picture right there, boys and girls, it's five-sided. It's actually shaped like a pentagon. Uh, let's see. What is the group of African-American military pilots? Go. Tuskegee Airmen. What'd you say? Tuskegee Airmen. Because what? Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee. Oh, Tuskegee. I'm going to give you, you guys that one. You give that, yeah. Tuskegee. I always have issues with that. Unless you guys said it wrong, then he wins. Okay. Who All was right. the first African-American to become a four-star general? Chubby James! I didn't say go. You guys win. General ah! Daniel Chappie James. Excellent. Mr. Cornthal, popcorn. Ooh, here I'm we not go. offering. You can read. Tuskegee Pilot Training Program. Good job. Thank you. Chappie James became a member of the Tuskegee Pilot Training Program. His flight instructor told him, You were born to fly. You are one of the best pilots I've ever trained. When Chappie James completed the training program, he was not able to get a place in the military flight school right away. He stayed at Tuskegee as a flight instructor. Later, when he was accepted into the U.S. Air Force, he became a flight instructor for all African-American 99th Pursuit Squadron during World War II. Wow, that, that was, was a, a mouthful. That was a mouthful. <laughs> okay, so what did we just learn in all that, boys mm. and girls? So, well, at Tuskegee, how was Chappie James able to learn to fly a plane? Hmm. It's funny, you can read it and still not know. I know. He actually just read it. So say it again. So while at Tuskegee. Yes. And most of the time you can find these in italics. So look around the italics yes, somewhere. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, while at Tuskegee, how was Chappie James able to learn to fly a plane? He became a flight instructor? No. Well, you can't instruct until you actually. Right. Uh... Look at the first sentence that you read. It's in italics. He became a member of the Tuskegee Pilot Training Program. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so he became a member of the Tuskegee Pilot Training Program. Okay. And what group of pilots did Chappie James train later? You just said it. It was the big Yes, muscle. oh my gosh. Okay, so we can say it again. Uh, all African-American 99th per, per, Pursuit. Pursuit, wow. Squadron during World War One. Yeah, two. that happens two. to me Not too. one, two. Your eyes look very blue. Thanks. Um... I'm going to read. Okay. I am going to work hard to be a general someday, Chappie James thought. When others heard of his goal, they thought it could never happen. Mm -hmm. But Chappie James remembered his mother's 11th commandment, and he was not going to give up. What was it? Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Okay, and boys and girls, guess what? Right now, <laughs> confession. So yes. for those of you who actually watched this video, I was like, lost it last night. I'm like, I'm just going to go walk to California. <laughs> I'm done with this quarantine. I, you not, you laugh, but I really felt like she that. She said she was going to drive. In the middle of the night. Yeah. I, I was like going to walk the neighborhood forever. Um, and then I was like, I'm just going to get in the car and drive to California. Uh, because I wanted to give up. I'm like so done with this right now. I feel like one of the Israelites wandering in the wilderness, like mm. when is this over? And I'm complaining about how it used to be better in Egypt. And I'm like, Remember when it was so much better? Remember when we, when we had food? Remember? Wait, ma, ma, ma. So anyways, um, but I'm reminded, just keep loving God, yeah. loving your neighbor, and doing the next That's right, bad, right thing. thing. So my goal when I got up this morning, Lord Jesus, help me to love you and love my neighbor, whatever that looks like today, mm -hmm. and do the next right thing. Help me not to quit. Right. So I'm, I'm confessing to you, I'm a 40-year-old woman who loves what I do and loves my family, and I just wanted to quit and never get out of bed or just drive to California. I don't know why, California. What would you do in California? I <laughs> no idea. <laughs> um, I was just gonna go. I had a full tank of gas and I was ready to go. Um, but thankfully, I came back home. Yes. So here I am to make a video for you. Because <laughs> 
you would have been done with videos. Miss Cornthal would have been off in California. I would have done the videos and it wouldn't have been as good. Just by himself. Okay. Tuskegee, you should have come after me in California. <laughs> so anyways, anyways, we're on page 446. Now that we're done with that commercial. Do you want to read? Okay. The Tuskegee pilot training program was designed to train African American men as pilots. When World War II began, the Tuskegee... Oh, uh, we'll say it ooh, together. The Tuskegee, Tuskegee Airmen, Airmen made up several units of all black pilots. These men became an important part of the war and were especially famous for their strength in the face of danger. danger. If they were assigned to protect the bomber plane, the Tuskegee Airmen stayed with it no matter what. These men were excellent pilots and flew many successful missions. Three Tuskegee Airmen, including Chappie James, went on to become generals. Awesome. So if you look right here, so you have to remember that in history, mm -hmm. there was the point where even though slavery was gone, there was major, major segregation yep. and um, just people were not treated equally. And so even though this group of pilots were incredible, the bummer part for me is that they were still considered different because they were African-American. Color their skin. I know, and it's, um, but what's cool about it is that they were able to show that, look, I'm awesome. Yes. And so even though they were being judged by the, uh, the color of their skin at the time, they were able to show, hey, you know what? It's by the character, it's the content of our character that you're gonna judge us. Mm -hmm. And what were they known for? Resilience, determination, bravery in the face mm -hmm. of danger. Mm -hmm. um, so the, get a little reminder of Martin Luther King. Yeah. You will not judge my kids by the color of their skin, but by the, the content, content of their, their character. character. So anyways, all right, a hero. Popcorn Mrs. Cornthal. Thank you. The plane is out of control. Chappie James co-pilot yelled during World War II training mission. No matter what officer, sorry, so no matter what officer James did, he could not get the plane to straighten out. They were gonna crash. Hang on, he yelled. As the plane went down, the co-pilot fainted. As it crashed, the canopy of the plane stuck and they were trapped. So that's the little like glass dome part you can actually kind of see in the picture. So that stuck. got stuck, so they couldn't get out. Chappie James knew the flames from the crash would soon reach the fuel tank and cause the plane to explode. With all the strength he had, he broke the canopy open and pulled his co-pilot to safety moments before the plane exploded. The two men escaped with only a few burns. That's amazing. If I woke up from that, I would give that guy a hug. Mm -hmm. Like, thanks, you're my new best friend. Uh, serving in the Air Force, Mr. Cornthal. After Lieutenant Chappie James recovered, he was sent to Korea and flew 101 combat missions in the Korean War. Okay, so... Did you catch that? They keep calling him different things. So they said Officer James, and now they're calling him Lieutenant James. What? Why do you think that is? He got promoted. Yeah. So if you, you know, so you go from Mr. Um, Mr. Sherman. What was his put title last year? Mr. Sherman, <laughs> assistant principal. Yeah, he was assistant <laughs> principal, um, and then he became what? Principal. The principal. So as you grow, your title changes. So Chappie James, he's still Chappie James, Chappie James, but he's growing in title. So he's moving up in the military. Okay, okay go ahead. Okay. Chappie James was promoted to lieutenant colonel and continued to train new pilots. He often said to his pilots, you've got the talent. Do something to help yourself. He wanted his pilots to do their best and not quit, just like his mother once expected of him. Next, the Vietnam War began, and Colonel mm, James found himself in a battle again. He trained pilots, flew 78 combat missions, and became a U.S. Air Force hero. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Mr. Cornthal, without looking back at the page, tell me how Chappie James saved the life of his co-pilot. He broke the canopy. Yes. Or he lifted the canopy off so he can get him out before it burst into flames. Yes. After it had done what? Crashed. Yes. Yes. Good job. Nailed it. Treasure ticket for you, buddy. Okay. General at last. So we went from officer to lieutenant to what would they just say? Colonel. Colonel. Now, general. General. 
Okay, in, we're on page 448. In 1969, the day Chappie James had dreamed of arrived. He was promoted to general and commander of the U.S. Air Force Base in the country of Libya. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. This was a great responsibility, and he was ready for the challenge. He later became a brigadier hmm. general and worked for the Secretary of Defense at the Pentagon, Pentagon the five-sided building that we already talked about. Finally, General Daniel Chappie James Jr. became a four-star general. This is the highest rank in the military during peacetime, and he was the first African-American to achieve this honor. Hmm. So if I was giving you a test, boys and girls, and I said, who was the first African-American to receive a four-star general award or four-star general ranking in the military? Who would you say? Chubby Dane. I asked them. I didn't ask you. Oh. But yes, what is it? Chubby Dane. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Well, I don't even know where I went. Um, with this promotion, so after the italics, with this promotion, General James became responsible for protecting all the United States and Canadian airspace from enemy attacks. That's a fun fact. Hmm. Mr. Cornthal. After 35 years in the military, General Daniel James Jr. retired. He had profoundly served... Oh, proudly. My goodness. And he profoundly. Had, and profoundly. He had <laughs> proudly served his country through times of war. When, other, when others quit, General James would not. When others tried to pull him down, he would not be discouraged. General James received many honors for bravery and skill as a pilot. He helped to bring about e equal rights for African Americans in the military. He loved his country and was thankful that he could serve the United States. I love it. Uh, I was telling Mr. Kornthal, I actually saw a video of Ronald Reagan, who's oh, in our yeah. other chapter, mm. dedicating a building to Chappie James. He has a lot of places dedicated to him. I didn't know especially that. Especially in uh, Pensacola. Huh. Speaking of which, okay. they mentioned Pensacola again. Okay. Here we go. Uh, fun fact, I'm trying to get... Uh, never mind. I won't even tell you. But something about Pensacola. We're on page 449. <laughs> I'm going to keep me on track, Mr. Yes. Kornthal. Page 449. Chappie James Flight Academy. In 1996, you know what I was doing in 1996? It was an 11th grade year of high school. I, I was in 11th grade at high school. Hmm. In 1996, well, and senior year too, the first part, a group of pilots started the Chappie James Flight Academy in Pensacola, Florida. I did watch some videos. There's some cool videos on YouTube. Maybe I'll put it on Google Classroom of kids actually at this flight school. It's pretty awesome. They're learning to fly and they even get a chance with a co-pilot who knows what they're doing. Um, they get a chance to actually fly. It's amazing. Mm. Um, a group of volunteers and former military pilots spend a week with students who are interested in aviation as a career. And aviation is piloting. Wow. Like, mm -hmm. During the school year, they provide tutoring as well as aviation programs after school. In June of 2018, 2018, mm. the newly constructed Chappie James Museum and Flight Academy opened its doors to a year-round program to involve children in learning about aviation. That was just two years ago. Amazing. Amazing. So, fun thing, maybe go online with your parents, look up the Chappie James Flight Academy, and see if maybe you guys could get involved in the program some yeah, way. Cool. Uh, see what age you need to be to do it. See if you could do it for like a week. Maybe you could do it as like a summer camp program type thing. Yeah. Uh, that would be amazing. Check um, into it if yeah. that interests you. And then maybe in your chapter uh, in history, <laughs> you will talk about how you learned about Chappie James and went to his flight.